Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs with Dr. Contrast. I hope everything's well with you all. Um, I just want to take a moment here to, uh, again, go back to last year. The last comment made in one of the streams we had was the fact that I just want to take a moment to thank you for your uh, your kindness over the course of the year to follow me on uh, the program here and uh, watch some of the, the, the things that we go through from uh, time to time and week to week on Tuesday, Thursday. So I can't thank you enough, and I hope all of you have a great new year. I'm wishing you a happy new year. And it's going to be back in the uh, in the program stream here. And uh, interesting thing took place over over the holidays and just let me a little bit of a preamble here um, I was uh, going through some uh, records and looking at maybe potential things for this coming year to do and how to deal with certain things and uh, I got an interesting commentary question from a young man uh, a young design student in England and uh, I thought it was very very timely because we all go through these things and I think we'd be remiss if we don't admit to that I mean I go through it sometimes and it's, it's a tough uh, sequence to go through and it was simply this his question to me was boy you know I love to draw but I have a hard time uh, thinking about what to draw and what do I draw and um, I came right back with a response for example that uh, one of the most incredibly powerful pieces of information you can deal with to get out of that syndrome is to really get into the process of learning how to deal with volumetric integration that's a very t long title here for the day's stream but uh, that's really what it's called when you take volumes for example just the five basic solids you begin to integrate them and, and begin to look at certain ways of a thinking process to shape your way through this thing. So uh, I think to help this young man out, I think we'll go through a series of sketches here um, to kind of show you what this really means in translation. Now, I'd be foolish to sit here and say, well, there's only these uh, six examples, for example, that are available. Um, it's, it's infinite. Uh, the whole creative world is infinite, as you all know. Uh, and the more infinite it becomes, the more intriguing it becomes, and I think it more challenges us to really develop new skill sets, and I think that's the key. Uh, <clears throat> from my opinion, that was a key to this question. Um, not that I'm afraid of drawing, but what to draw? How do you, what, what, when you get out of that syndrome, here's what uh, the three basic steps uh, we're going to work on today in, this, in today's stream uh, to start the new year. It's simply this. Number one, volumetric integration is putting pieces together that becomes a very solid thinking process. It, it, it requires of us to think through the geometry in, in all dimensions, for example, as, as it being transparent. Number two, it's a process that eliminates what to draw. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honor-bound to make that comment because if we look at the putting of volumes together like we're going to go through here today, and then we begin to integrate them and begin to take shape changes, um, that's, an, that's an incredible asset because you're opening up the vocabulary in the, in the, world of, in the infinite world of design or form and shape begins to open up and you begin to adapt that accordingly. I think that's absolutely critical. And the third point we're going to look at, and I want to stress this above all else, is simply this. It's very critical to not put labels on what we draw. In other words, not going to be a coffee maker, it's not going to be a, a, a clock, it's not going to be a camera. Don't give it a designation. Just give it a shape study. Give it a volumetric study that makes it uh, really interesting. Hey, hi, Rachel. How are you? Good to have you. Yes, I did have a good break. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, how are you doing? Doing well? Cool. I'm really glad you've been. Are you, are you going to be with us for a little while, or is this going to be kind of a temporary thing here? <clears throat> so, while Richard's responding here, I think that's a real mission. I think there's a real huge, huge dilemma, and a lot of I've worked workshops and worked with young people in the past that have a hard time. Well, what do I draw? How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, I'm really kind of take some time today here, uh, coming out of the blocks, with a whole new look at saying, all right, here's how to get out of that syndrome. So let's look at how we're going to do this. Um, these are these are I, I put together six combinations of just basic well, like spheres and right, uh, interesting thing too. This shape right here, it's a third dimensional uh, variation of a rectangle. A rectangle is a, a solid is not a solid it's a plane so we call a rectangle a plane so what is it called when you go to a three-dimensional object for example we have names for like sphere cones cylinders and um, and uh, cubes and so forth but we don't have a real designation that well, at least the world is not aware of there's a designation for a three-dimensional rectangle it's called an obloid or better we look at it, a cuboid which means it's really um, an extension it's a it's a three-dimensional object of the rectangle I, now the one I learned from Sid Mead was it's a rectangular which is in the same family it's a solid based individual piece so uh, all that to say that's really interesting we're going to take some of these shapes for example sphere rectangular rectangular cone rectangular so to combine some things here to see what we can come up with. And I think that's going to be really, really critical in terms of putting together some pieces here uh, for some conceptual stuff. So I'm going to take each one of these guys bit by bit and begin to go through a process of beginning to integrate them and kind of some massage them and put them into some sort of a shape designation as a volumetric study, not giving it a title, but just going through a study of shapes here. So let's go back and let's get this started. I'm going to work with a newsprint pen, uh, newsprint paper rather, and a ballpoint pen. So let's take the first guy here. Let's take that one where we have this. We go here. 
Let's get that sphere in place. Then right on top of that, let's kind of draw through this guy like we did in the original. We're going to take this sketch right here. We come right back in and just begin to look at possibility of just integrating this guy with a rectangle ballpoint pen, nice and loose. Nice and easy. Just draw through it. Come back in through here, just kind of get it all started. Just nice and lightly putting the volume together. Now there's a variation right there. Now let's start to integrate this thing. Let's say we do this. Let's come back in off of this form and begin to do this. Take that shape and bring that off of this shape. And then notice this is now, let me do this just to be sure that we understand it. And the volume I'm looking at here is a sphere. So it's got this kind of construction to it. It's that to that. So I've got to be very careful that this shape comes in and rolls off of that form like so and comes right back down to that base. Let's just do that. And roll that up, and that's going to kind of disappear. Let's connect the dots here. There's a start. We're going to bring that together. Now let's put a little bit of incline on this thing and, and, and just change the character. Let's put a round back here through here, draw through it, come back out of it. Now let's put that tail together here, come back in through here, and then just kick it right back. Change its shape. Very simple. And again, change in the complement. Now let's go back through a center line here. Let's get that all set up. Look where we started. And look how we're getting, beginning to set up. Let me turn this aside just for a moment here. We'll turn this up. Come back through here. Drop this in. Drop there. Now we can do some neat stuff here. I come back and begin to, begin to break the shape up by doing the following. Put a little bit of this into it. Come back into this. Come back across the top here and change its character. Draw through it and begin to see what's taking place here. I'll get up on top. I can, back, I can make this more transparent by coming back in. A little tone in this thing, if that's what I want to look at. Come back through here, I can change this shape here. I can come back in and put a little bit of a base system on this guy. Change the character of that, run that on through. Let me get this back into form here. But my point is, look how we started it. We started out with a sphere. Let me turn this around here. Sorry here, folks. I'm in my paper as we go here. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience. Look where we started. For example, we started with a shape that looked like that. There it is, but look at the transformation we're making with it. So it's a matter of learning and seeing how when these forms begin to put the, uh, what the geometry is all about and what they're beginning to tell us. So again, let's do this. Let's get this into here. Put a little bit of tone in this too. I can come back in and put a little bit of, little bit of section work in this thing, a little bit of, again, not giving it a title or an object or a product name, just, just developing shape. Come back in again. A little highlight on this side. I can come back in and make some changes in through here, too. I can put a little maybe a button there and a series of them, just kind of adding some of the character of that sketch. But there again, there's there's one way of looking at how to look at these forms in terms of starting with two and integrating two geometric shapes and putting them together to integrate them to develop a new form or a shape of some sort. But notice that the most important thing I want to stress here is this. Since this is a spherical shape, that's a spherical shape, that line has to come out of there and roll in that contour, roll in that contour. And then as it comes out of that, you begin to put that whole piece together and then begin to mod modify the, the shape of the rectangle. So that's, that's one way of looking at this guy. So that's, that's one, uh, getting into just again, integrating form studies. How do you take shapes, for example, that are outside the envelope of, well, I don't know what to draw, and put forms together or geometric solves together and just create an element and be very lucid with it. And I will say this too, I think it's really important to really pick this up at this stage of the game. When you work with this integration process, do not try to overanalyze it. The first thing you have to look at, for example, when I go through this process, is what's its constitution? If it's spherical, there's a certain geometry I've got to follow. That you can't violate. But you will violate the fact you can add to it, you can stretch it, you can extend it, you can do all kinds of all things with it by exploring. And that's the whole purpose of today's stream, to learn how to explore certain things and begin to move into certain areas that become wholly new for you. And again, really expand your creative vocabulary and it makes it so much more powerful to work with. So there's number one. Let's go back and let's pick up this guy right here. Let's go back and do this. Let's get this shape. Let's just do it, redraw it here. Let me get back on the board. Let's redraw it. That's what we have right here. We're going to work on this guy right here. We're going to go back in, just again, put this rectangular down, lay that in place, then put its piece up on top. Let's get that guy, let's add that cone to it. Now, at this stage of the game, we're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with that? I mean, that's, those are two extremely opposite ends. One's very conical, very round, the other being the rectangular. 
extremely sheer. However, we can take a look at the same process again by right, beginning to look beyond it and say, all right, now let's extend this line. Let's take a chance here. Let's take a line off of this and then change that. Let's bring it back. Let's put a little bit of a semi-round right in through here. So let's get this back right out of this shape right here. Let's take that through, drop this down, drop that down. Those are my control points. I'm gonna come out of here with that shape, roll this into place. Again, maybe I put a little crown in this hat too. Just a little bit more around this end. Let's just round it out just a bit. Let's just hold on to that. Let's take this guy and change this paradigm. Let's just move this into a radius. Let's get this in a little bit of a radius. Let's soften this off by just coming right off the, the, the end of that cone. I'm not coming right back in and doing this. Let's draw through it. So there's my basic geometry. It's already set. So what do I do with it? Now let's, let's have some fun with this. Let's imagine it. Let's kind of take this now. We've got a crown at it now. Let's add that more crown to it. Let's break that up. And then break this. Use that line underneath. And sleeve it back in there. Maybe a little window of some sort. So that's that started. Let's take that line through and add a little bit of a razor in there just to change it. Look at the dynamic in that form already. Begin to change its character by opening it up a little bit and changing and expanding it and exploring, again, the whole purpose is to explore what this creative process does for us. It doesn't force us into a thinking process. It demands of us to think about what we're dealing with. And at the same time, it's really a funny set of circumstances, an odd set of, it's almost like a misnomer. On one hand, you're exploring things in the unknown. And the other thing, you're using the known to explore the unknown. It's, it's a real odd situation. So it's simplifying saying that is, think of it as just an exercise in learning how to combine the geometric solids or the forms to create a new vocabulary. And again, do not put a label on it. Just explore shapes. Don't try to say, I'm going to do a new toaster. I'm going to do a new camera. That, that destroys it. Because anyway, you begin to fixate on, oh, cameras look like this. Uh, oh, and the toasters look like that. Maybe not. So this is the whole idea. Let's go back to the sketch. Just one more. Just kind of get this in place. Let's take this and kind of change. Let's draw a little bit through this. Add that. A little bit of a change of pace here. Let's put a little section in this guy. Let's come right after this thing. Now, let's, let's make a change here. Let's come back in and add that to it. We're going to cut that through like a frustrum. We're going to cut that, that top right up that cone. Let's bring this in. <clears throat> Let's bring this down. Let's recess that. Let's put a little tone in this thing. Draw through it. Come back in again. Draw through it. When that section changes here, bring that around the corner. Just do a little bit of this. Put some fluting in this guy. I'm just exploring here. Nothing really set in. I'm just putting some little flanges in there. And then let's put a little bit of a power button in this thing. This might be needing that kind of a deal. And that's a little bit of a power button there. And then get a little bit more tone in it. This might be a view window here. Let's come back and get that to work. Add a little bit of tone to it. <clears throat> and then this. Come back off of that shape. A little bit of reflective quality into that form. And again, let's just take this and that up. Highlight there, draw through it, and express it. Let's draw through that. Come back and maybe just a touch. If you want to add a bounce, a little bit, a little bit of bounce of this thing, draw a little bit of a frame behind it, a little bit of a backdrop, and come away from the light source side and just give yourself a little bit of tone. Put it into a composition of some sort. All right, Rachel, if you're still there, uh, what do you think? Is this making sense for you? I mean, I just want to make sure that this communication that we're dealing with here, it, it can get a little tricky, and it can become a very, very delicate set of circumstances to deal with. And I think the thing that, that, that really, the one aspect I really want to make sure we stress here is do not be afraid to make mistakes, because that's where the miracles are. That's what this teaches us to do. It gets out of the mindset of, oh, it has to be perfect, oh, it has to be just right, or it has to be this or that. It's an exploratory surface generation, putting integrated forms together and beginning to deal and, and to look what they might uh, what they might appear to look like. So I'm going to hold on for a minute here, Rachel. Are you still there? And if you are, please be kind enough to let me know if I'm communicating all right, but what, what this whole process is all about. I'll just be quiet here for a moment and wait for the response. While I'm doing that, right in here, I'll just kind of tune back in and get a little more sex, uh, sketch in this thing here, just kind of walk through them a little bit, change a little bit, just add to it, and there we are. 
Uh, I'm going to move ahead here. If you get a chance to, Rachel, please, if you're still there, give me a note and uh, let me know how we're doing with this thing. So there we are. Um, there's sketch number two. This we've already worked with. We've already knocked uh, this one down and became that transformation. This one became that transformation. Now let's work with this guy right here. Let's see what that guy begins to do. I'm going to get a fresh sheet of paper here. Let me just do this first. Sign this thing. Let's get this out of the way. We'll start a fresh sheet of paper here. <clears throat> Pardon me. There we are. Hey, hey, Jeff, how are you, man? It's good to have you on board. Making sense. First one I could make a cool vehicle. Yeah, you, that would be a neat man. That's right. Put a little bit of wheels on this guy, Jeff. You got it right here. This little the vehicle cab, you got it. Um, and again, I don't know if you caught the beginning of the program here, Jeff, but I think uh, coming out of the blocks <clears throat> this year, I just got that note from this uh, young design student in England about having a problem what to draw. So I thought, well, maybe the response, uh, if he's listening later on today in the UK, the uh, response I had to him was, I tuned into my Trish program. I'm going to de dedicate a little bit of time to this whole thing about volumetric in integration, where you actually take solids and just put them like I did this page right here, Jeff. I just put a series of combinations of, of geometric solids together, and now we're moving into the area of maybe uh, putting some synergy into it and beginning to transform it into a series of sketches, like the one you, the page we, you've seen here, uh, taking the same geometry underneath, just expanding it and making uh, some some real transitions to it, just to kind of, not not giving it a title or a subject matter, but just exploring what shape can do. And I think what the really great benefit of that is, it's just, <clears throat> yeah, preconceived ideas. That's a great way to put it, uh, Jeff. You're looking at opening things up in terms of expanding, I said earlier in the introduction of the program, expanding your creative vocabulary by not labeling certain things. Really interesting stuff. So here we go. Let's get this guy. Let's, let's move into this one right here. Let's, let's get this guy into play here. So it's basically, we've got this rectangular form. Redraw it. Set that up. We have this coming into play. Setting that up. Drawing through it just a bit. Then attaching, for example, that cylindrical form on the end cap here. So let's go and put that in place. Let's get this down. Let's get this down. Draw through it. Draw through it. And it's off that tangent, so we're going to sit right there. Now, right off the bat, notice what's really taking place here is that this is a very tight circle because it's closer to our eye level. This drops down, so this opens up quite a bit. But sometimes, often, we make the mistake of this being the same size as that guy. It's not going to happen, as you all know, Jeff and Rachel. It's a totally different set of circumstances. So here we go. Now, what do we do with this guy? Well, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of open this up. Let's take this shape and just let's roll this off and, and combine that into that. Let's take the same thing, go through the base, and open that up. So all of a sudden, we've closed in the volume. We've closed that negative space. There we are. Let's come around here. Let's put a little bit of this in here. Let's draw through this. Let's take this shape, and instead of being so boring, let's just take that form and just let's roll that up. A little bit of angle, slope to it. A little bit of slope to that. So let's come back in through here, laying that same ground line. There's my perspective drive line, so I'm going to come out here just a bit. I'm going to take this thing and run it right back in to here. And then roll that out of it. Now let's come right around here. Bring that at the speed. Now let's take this shape right up and roll it right into this. So right away, we've taken that very simple geometric element and began to integrate it and begin to develop a whole new vocabulary. Hopefully, things so there's not newness in the terms of being shocking, but just a new way of looking at it. Integrate form. Let's come back in through here. Let's kind of put a little bit of razor in this guy. Let's come back and overset that just a bit here. Let's kind of drop that in. Let's come back down through here. Let's take that line and can bring it down and just change a little bit of this. Let's get that. Just add that to it. Let's bring it across. And we'll keep everything intact here. Let's kind of get this a little bit of an offset here. Let's take this guy, put a little bit of tone to it now. Let it fade. Come across and through here. Let's draw another one through here. Put a little bit of a cap on it. Let's take that back here. Let's take this line and just, just come back in and just sneak this through. Just run back just a bit. There we are. Let's get this in place. Let's run that through. Let's run that through. Now let's offset this.
I'm gonna let that be a little bit more asymmetrical. Let's put a tone on this guy to kind of let where that shelf goes and it fades into that form itself. And there we are. Let's put a little bit of this into it just to change the texture. And again, a bit of shape in this guy. So the light source is coming in from over here. So we'll just come back in through here and just uh, drop this guy in and just put a little bit of this crown on it, a little bit of shape to it. A little nomenclature, a bit of shadow in this guy. And again, draw through a little bit of transparency down below. Get these lines to work through here. And right away, there's another form being generated. Let me see if I can get this out. Uh, that, that guy becomes this guy. I don't know if that makes sense at all or not here, but there's another little variation on theme about taking those forms and getting to work with them. And again, start with a cylinder, and again, that rectangle underneath, and just begin to integrate the shapes together. Develop a whole new vocabulary. It gets rid of the preconceived ideas. Jeff Wells said. So that guy goes to that guy, if you can see it or not there. Now we're just kind of bringing it. There you are. So that just barely does it right there. So that's that's one way of completing, for example. Again, we're taking some pretty interesting shots here at what's, what's taking place. There's a series of family of forms right there, just from basic geometry and putting the integration together. And again, cannot stress enough, and I think it's so important, that the, the key thing here is to not put a label on it. Put them together, combine the integration, let it go, and let it become just, a, again, an exercise in learning to become, how to become much more lucid and seeing things. What do you think, Jeff? Making sense so far? If you're still there, you as well. Rachel, feel free to pipe in. I need all the help I can get here. So thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate you taking the time to be with me here today. It's terrific. So this is the beginning of the new year, and um, while I'm at it, I'll just take a bit of a break here and let you know that some of the things that's going to be coming up, um, I might be going, going into a, um, um, a timing change or a schedule change. Um, very interesting how um, Tuesday, Thursdays are okay. They're working pretty well, but I think I'm going to start maybe to experiment with maybe a Wednesday evening from 6 to 8. Um, and if, I would really appreciate your input. Um, is that is that a valid time? Would that make sense? Um, do you think it's a worthwhile to make the adjustment? I think it's for me. I got a lot of uh, I haven't in the last month or so of the new the last year, a lot of input from Europe, um, uh, different areas, the UK, Spain, Germany, a lot of people calling in or dialing in and saying, hey, you know, I love your program, and it's, uh, but it was uh, gee, I started too, so it's. So it's already it's uh, already 7 p.m. In, in the UK. By the time I'm all done, it's late in the evening. So sometimes I might make that change. I just thought we'd get your input on that uh, as we go forward here. And I think the other thing I'm gonna start doing too is much more. It's kind of lifting out some of the streams and taking some evaluation things. For example, what if we did this differently? What if we took a vehicle like a um, uh, let's say a Ferrari um, or a vehicle of some sort? So what did they do this for? How could we make that? Uh, what would we do with that? Not to make it better, but obviously we can't do that. But just going through some design changes, and again, the things like em empathy studies, how to transfer sketches. There's a whole list of things I want to really accomplish. And the biggest news of all, I think I'm going to start condensing everything under the website at drcontrast.com and begin to put together uh, what I call, <clears throat> uh, uh, right now on the website, we have a store that's got some print work on it, but I'm going to start putting together some apparel on racing things that I've done over the years, uh, some of the some of the motorsport stuff, like uh, Porsche Jeff, for example, Porsche Ferrari, Lamborghini Maserati, all that, and getting in some t-shirt graphics and put them under the store, and uh, doing some space, uh, space vehicle stuff for Star Citizen out in California. So all that stuff is going to come together here. So enough said. We'll pick up that a little bit later. So thank you for input there, Jeff. So now we've gone through three of those studies. What happens when we get a guy like this, where you get a sphere and a, and a, uh, <clears throat> and a cylinder attached to it? Let's do this. Let's get that sphere in place. Let's kind of draw through an axis here. We're going to come back in, start with that, and just end it through. And there's the actual rework right there. That's what we started with. Notice it's a little bit tighter. It's a little bit more open. We're good. That's a good deal. Let's take a look at this guy and say, what do we do with this to begin to get that whole form study or this integration process to work? Well, first, thing, first things first is to do this. Let's go back in and just drop it off, round this off. Let's round this off. Let's come back and add that. Let's extend a cap to it. Let's draw through the acronym. Now, this is a fun part. Let's take this guy right here and open this up. Change the angle just a bit. 
Come down here, change the angle just a bit. And draw through that spear again and flare this thing back. Draw through it, drop its contact, get the base in, draw that through. Again, notice that shape dictates what's happening back here. I'm just taking that spear and reducing its scale by getting a little bit more of a product line in this thing. Now let's come back in through here and let's, get, let's draw that tangent in here and then change this. Let's come back in again. Open this up just a bit more. And let's put some grounding on this thing. A little bit of a foot. There it is. Now let's come back in through here. Put a bit of tint in here. Uh, if I'm say, there we are. That's better. Let's put some. Let's put some tint in this thing now. Pardon me as I turn this sideways here, gang. That's that. And through here, we release it just a bit in the light source. Save that part. Let's get this little reflective light in through here. Let's kind of get that place. Let's move this over just a touch more. Let's get this into place. A little bit of a texture change to it. Now let's kind of come right back through the, the actual body of this thing. Let's put a button there. Down the contour, down the contour. Let's put one there. And let's put one there. Let's move it in just a bit. Put some nomenclature underneath it. This scribbles. A little bit of definition up on top and through it all. And again, down through here, maybe a bit of a texture change in this. A little bit darker. Then release it. Shadow. Into that base. Same thing underneath here. And there it is, another little study based on how we can put those pieces together. And again, we're taking the two very diametrically opposed shapes, really. Yeah, they're both round, but one's very round, all fully spherical, the other's a rectangular, or uh, cylindrical form. And there you go, there's, there's another element in terms of putting it together. What do you think there, Jeff and uh, Rachel, are you still with us? Looking good, gang. I hope this is making sense out of uh, uh, how to get past this whole phobia of learning what to draw or how to treat the drawing process and break out some of this, the phobias we have. It's just amazing how it all begins to really disturb us, no question about that at all. So what do you think, guys? So far, so good? Let me move along here just for a second while you respond, hopefully. Again, concept, volumetric integration. Put the shapes together. Don't think about anything. Don't give it a label and just draw and begin to integrate them and blend the forms together. So there's another set of circumstances here. There's a two. Let's go back in through here. We'll review these guys at the end of the day here. Let's go back into something else. Here. Let's take a look at what this, what this guy is going to do right here. I'll be at the cube and again, rectangular. Let's put the two together. Let's start there. I'm going to get this all and just reproduce the sketch here. So we have this. Draw through it just a bit. So we can see the volume, what it's doing. I'll come back in and pick that shoulder up that we're dealing with here. So we've got that rectangular coming off a bit. Dropping down. Again, dropping down. Coming through it basic surface. 
That's what we're going to start with right there. Now let's take a look at how we integrate this shape and then develop something out of it that becomes an entity or a surface piece. So there it is. There's the actual shape itself. Oh, we can't see it there. There it is. Let's, let's bring this back into reality. So there it is. Let's, let's just take a look at this. Now, first thing we're going to do is this. Come back in and begin to bring them all together. Raise it up just a minute. No, let's take this back and crown it. Let's take this back. Let's come back from through here. Get that to work. Let's come back underneath here just enough. At some point, let's slant this over. It's going to change that character right there. It's going to take that through. Let's take this on. This, let's get this guy here. It's going to take this down. Put a bit of a widow's peak in it here. Let's take this around. And draw through it. Put some transparency into it. And come right back and hit that landmark right there. Let's come back down through the center line. Let's put a little bit of this in it. Turn this around just a bit here. A little bit of tone to it. And again. There's some cut lines in this thing. Break up the shape just a bit. There it is. There's a little sketch study based on putting the form together, and uh, that came out of this product right here. We just put them side by side, and there you are. So there she is. Uh, pretty interesting stuff here, guys, in terms of putting these forms together. Let's kind of run this change this just a bit here. Pardon me, I turn this upside down. A little rounder in this thing. It's just a little bit of a widow's peak. Let's kind of go ahead and put the same process in place here. Just a little more tone in this guy. So there we are. There's another series of things that we're looking at here in terms of, again, learning how to put together volumetric integration, just drawing certain things and combining shapes and so forth to get them all put together. So there he is. Now, this is the last one's going to be a good one. This is a real tough one right here. This is going to be a lot of fun. Come back in with a conical shape and a cube on top of that. So what do we do with this? Well, let's see what we come up with here. Let's see this. Let's do this. Let's plot this thing through. <clears throat> so this is what we've given ourselves to work with here. So we've got this cube that kind of comes in and graphs on top of this conical shape. Now, at that stage of the game, it's a little bit of a complication in terms of what do you do with something like this that's extremely very, very organic. I'm going to get that to work together. Now you can see it. There it is. Yeah. That's the original sketch. There's where we're going to start to work with to kind of integrate the forms together. So it's going to take some real chances here. So I think let's, let's kind of take a different approach to this guy just for a moment. Let's see. We, let's, see we, let's see we take this and say, all right, let's extend this. Let's break that up. Bring it back in perspective. Let's see we drop that down. So we come back in again off of this shape. Let me change that. 
So we come up with this with one more. Then we're going to take this. Shoulder that off of that. And let's take this shape. And tunnel it back. And right away, you can start to see where I'm going to head with this guy. This would be a nice little, maybe a conceptual architectural study, but the problem is, okay, now you, how, do you, how do you rectify and resolve this with this? Well, you keep going with this guy. You come up, maybe you extend this out a bit more. You come up with this plane here, and you just drop this shape right out of there. And you drop that shape right out of there. Let's come back down to ground, which is going to be right there. So I integrate this. Let's say I come up the bottom of that, that cone and do this. Change this character, we come up front and do this. Now let's go just a little more parabolic with this guy. Let's lift this up. And extend that through. And extend that through. Now the ground, back in perspective, back in drive line. Now, come back in again, looking at this guy and say, all right, maybe I've got a strong line here. Maybe I take that across and break it in. Maybe I take that back and use that mistake. There's a little bit of a cantilever and overhang. Now, let's take this back with my drive line there. Let's drive this back. And again, open this up. Atrium, offset, outside the realm of the form itself, roadways. Under the surface, back out again to normal. Roadway, roadway. Let me stop there for a moment. Uh, we've taken that form, this very complicated combination of two very definitely opposing surfaces and we created this architectural structure. Now, it's not the greatest in the world, but I'm again, I'm exploring. I just want to take a look at what might happen with this stuff here. Now, let's, let's go a little further with this thing. It gives a real character, some personality. What if I take this shape, and there it is there. What if I do this? Let's put a, a bosque of trees right there. Let's go back in through here. An offset. To the roadway. Let's start breaking this thing up. All of a sudden, look at how that scale changed from just those two certain things that we're dealing with here. Again, this is a variation on theme off of this study right here. Um, just taking that whole idea and just literally really kind of expanding on the whole idea of just opening it up. And in this case, it's, an it's a different architectural study, so it is something. But it's again, it's exploratory. Even though I'm giving it a label, pardon me if I'm not trying to be conflicting here, I'm giving it a label, but again, just looking at now, that seems like a pretty neat deal for this. Let's go back and do a little bit of a, a little bit of tone work here now. walk you through some of this stuff, into shadow, into this. <clears throat> Come back up to this promenade here. Maybe there's a little bit of a, another variation of theme here. This might be a whole series of shrubberies, one, two, three of them. One, 
to three of them into the center line. A bit of relief there. Again, it's a bit of tone and shadow underneath these guys. Let's plant them. There's a shadow in through here. Tell us where we're going with this guy. Just getting a character down. Variation of theme here. No, let me stop there for a moment. Very quiet out there. What do you think, guys? Is, is this helping or uh, hindering at all? Is it making sense for us? I just uh, pause for a moment here to get some feedback on this. I hate to go quiet, but I'm just going to concentrate and put some sketches together or some of the concept work together on this little form study here. And while I'm waiting for a response, please feel free to let me know if this is making sense. Uh, hopefully it is. Very difficult set of circumstances to deal with. There's nothing worse than getting in the fright of what do I do? How do I draw this stuff? What do I what, what's the action? What do I want to really develop here? Um, so again, just really feel free to kind of open up here, guys. That plays into that. Just breaking up some of the shapes here in the form. Notice how that thing can keep going and going, going and going and going. I mean, it's just endless. Um, just really interesting how it all begins to got a jet. Great. Hey, take care, Jeff. Thanks very much for joining us here. Really appreciate it. And uh, Rachel, if you're still there, what do you think? Is this uh, coming along okay? Uh, last but not least, just a series of studies, again, based on the whole idea, the premise of putting together a whole series of, uh, like, a library of things. Let me just put a tone on this guy, just so it's a separate one form from another. There you go. 
as stated today. The purpose of the stream was to really kind of accentuate the fact that we all have drawing difficulties. So we started out with this whole thing about going in <clears throat> and putting together what I refer to as volumetric integration. I mean, putting two pieces together and just abstracting the shape and then beginning to think through it and understanding how I'm going to get from point A to point Z by just developing form and shape. Not putting a label on it, just developing forms. It really helps to open up the whole idea of being getting out of the habit of preconceived ideas. It's not a camera, it's not a toaster, as I said earlier. It's a whole different set of circumstances in terms of working with shape. So we started out with the whole series. These, these guys were just put together initially before I started the stream. This is what we dealt with. You know, we have six different volumetric sites. Now I realize there's infinite stuff there, but nonetheless, that's what that's what happens there. So the, the, these are the products of, of, again, taking, for example, this variation became this. Oops. That variation right here was a product of working with integrating this form, or forms. This one was a, a combination of this study here, was integrating this combination, just adding things to it and being very, very lucid, not worrying about whether it works or not. It's a matter of just learning how to put together forms and begin to put synergy together to make a statement about what you're drawing and how you're seeing your, your uh, side envelope open up. So let me do this. There it is there. So those studies, I think, are really, let me go back to this one more. These are really critical in terms of how to work with certain shape. And I think the, the thing that's really critical about this is, is this. And we said it's a little bit of time spent on the, uh, the actual uh, conversion process itself. When you get into things like this, it's always very, really critical to know that that's a spherical shape. So one axis is doing this, the other axis is doing this. That line there follows suit with what we do here, and that will follow suit with what we do here. That follows right along that shape, and it rolls back into itself, and it comes right over the top. That's a geometry there. Now, if I come back and change the character up on top, I'm gonna take that same center line right there, run it through, bring it up, and then begin to abbreviate it, and put it there. Now, put that tail back into place. I can come back and do this. I can change that character again. I can take this line through. Notice how I use that geometry to kind of set the sketch up. Same with this guy. You come back in and expand the time. We added this, came out and just opened that up, did that to it, blunted it, came back and picked up that same rectangular form here, integrated that and softened this off, took this shape and opened it up and put a frustrum up on top of this and cut it right off, use that center line to come in create a form here and then just roll that right back then we put a little bit of crown in this thing so right how we took that shape and again expand on it same thing here geometry here took this form right here and just opened that up like that and opened that up like that and then we added things to it like putting more slope on the side walls and taking that on through which extended this form out little things like that make a huge difference this is what i refer to in red pen this is what i'm referring to about the thinking process i mean i've got a format to work notice i'm honoring a ton of things here perspective shape circles and perspective spheres and how the geometry works it's all part of the whole process of learning how to get out of the habit of being trapped into not knowing what to draw this is really, a, a, to me, a great method of opening things up by just exploring shape and vocabulary and letting it just fly. This guy, same thing, opened that up by just coming back in through here, coming through here, cut back into it, then opened the line up here, and then opened the line up here. Notice I projected through, got that point, and then spiked it in. Got that little dart to work. And that's what started that shape. Went back in through here, and again, adding this, and then adding this. And then putting that whole that whole geometry that center line came through here now adding that that button there that button there and the button there and all of a sudden that whole changed and change the entire texture of those forms same with this guy back in the end open this up by doing the following open that up by doing the following drop that off drop that off brought this back in extended this out change the base brought it through returned it open that up come back to the center line Open the lens up, just open that up, just a, maybe a glass something or whatever, right there, there it is. Now this guy could be a lot of fun to work with. You can kind of, there's a ton of things you can see in this shape. You come back and put a little bit of finger holes through here, and that was it. Again, notice, it all started by just putting the things and kind of sculpting or blending the shape into place here. This one, of course, very obvious. Come back in again, adding a little bit of down the ground line. Let's just kind of start this thing here. Through this, came back into here, added ground. Came back up to that base, changed the flare here, opened that up, added this, 
open that up almost like a horseshoe shape put it back in perspective begin to add things onto this form here by coming above back in the drop lines and just changing things oh no notice, notice right there we're starting to see how this shape comes together you know this now take this form here and run it underneath shadow going back outside the form creating some of this stuff taking this line on through creating a catwalk out over on this side and then again putting a little bit of change of pace in there coming back into this adding a greenhouse you know, some sort of a glass system on top of this thing adding this change the character of this whole rectangular form notice notice i'm carving out all those shapes certain things that begin to work in terms of mystifying just mystifying in a sense that it becomes, it mystifies us when we start with it, but it begins to clarify itself the more we work with it because we understand what the geometry is doing now. To me, that's the key word, what understanding the geometry and what it's doing. That's what gives us the right, or not the right, gives us the opportunity to dive in there and make some really, in some cases, ridiculous changes. And that's what form integration is all about. Make those mistakes, learn to see how these forms come together. And in every single instance in these sketches, when I started the stream today, I fully understood what the two volumes were rectangular sphere conical form rectangular spherical form rectangular sphere cylinder cube rectangular conical form cube we, we designate those things and i began to take those things and begin to fill in the negative space open it up sometimes i added to it that's part of the whole process of getting out of the habit of, of pardon me of breaking the habit of what do i draw Oftentimes, I mean, I've gone through it, for example, several times. We actually have a very difficult time drawing certain things. I'm like, geez, this is going to work out all right. Gosh, I uh, just don't know if this is going to work. That's the time to kind of pull everything back, put all your vocabulary away, and just sit down and begin to generate what I refer to as, as today's stream, volumetric integration. Put two pieces together, take chances, and create. And do not label. Again, to review, volumetric integration is a method by which the thinking process is paramount. It also helps to open up the door in terms of breaking down the paradigm of what to draw. Last but not least, do not, it's critical, absolutely paramount to not put a label on it. Now, I did that one sketch here. Let me bring this one back. This one I did, I came back to an architectural site. It just seemed to lend itself there. Now, that's a bit of a cheat job there, but nonetheless, strange building, but we made something out of it. And that's the key, make something out of it. What, is it, what, is my, what does that mean by make something out of it? Make an impact on your mind and your creative visual systems. Make an impact on it. Oh, I see. This could be done like that. This could happen. Really interesting things begin to take place. And I will say this, too, and I think it's not an exaggeration. Um, I, I prefer to believe this with all my heart, that when you go into visual systems like this, and you start to look at uh, volumetric integration, there's no question and there's no debate whatsoever. It opens up the floodgates of creativity. You become much more lucid. You become less fearful. You get past the phobia. Oh, gee, what if this doesn't work out right? Because there's no real pressure in making it right. You're just developing shapes. It's a tremendous way to open up the vocabulary. And that young man, if he's listening in England today, I hope this has been of some help to him. Let's go back and review here where we started. Um, this is page one. We opened up here. Let's go back to number one, the very first page. We started off with a series of volumetrics, six of them. Now we came back and said, all right, first page we're going to do is we're going to integrate this guy, which became that study right there. And the second study became that guy became this guy. So we just went right down the line and began to integrate these, these processes as we went through the system here. So page two is this. And we come back in again when we took this one became this one. Oh, I can't see it, but let's do this. That sketch became this study. Again, integrating the forms. And the red lines here indicate what we did in the geometry to kind of bring it all together. And this one was a product of this one. Uh, again, start out with a sphere and a cylinder, and that's what we began to integrate into some sort of form of some shape. I'm not going to give it a title or a name, but it just created that. And then last but not least, we did this guy, where it became a process of this form. Notice a cube, rectangular, put that into play with it, and that's what we came up with right there. That's that uh, product sketch or some sort of an uh, ideation sketch. Then the last one is probably the most complicated one of all. That's a tough one to deal with. And uh, again, conical form. And again, a cube on top of that. So we took the liberty of really breaking up. Let me do this if that works together. Nah, just barely make it. There you go. 
how this shape became that form I mean that series of studies so that's where we are here gang and I think again so critical to be very very reminiscent of the fact that when you go through these cycles like this it's so critical to not get into a habit of saying oh gee you know I need to develop a thing or it has to be has to have a certain look <clears throat> you can actually take that same thing let's do this one last piece here the more you practice this and the more you begin to dedicate yourself to letting go and uh, letting the mystery unfold itself, I think it's so it's so critical to, to get ourselves, I hope I can say this in the right context, so please don't misunderstand. <clears throat> it's so <clears throat> helpful and so critical to get ourselves out of the way. Let's move our, our preconceived notions out of the way and just begin to open up what we begin to think about in terms of, oh, wouldn't it be cool to, what, what if, what if, what if? We don't spend enough time saying that to us. What if I did this? What if I tried that? What if it fails? So what? You've tried. That's a key thing right there. So let's do this. Let's say, let's say I come back with this. Let's say I lay down this. Then I lay down this. What am I going to do with that? I don't know. But if I had a line to it, then I come out of here and add another line to that. You know where I'm going? Yeah. I think you can see it. No, just the same thing? Absolutely. That is, again, another example of volumetric integration. All I've done there is taken a great big, huge ovoid and a flat rectangle and began to create an automobile out of it. I mean, let me just show you what I mean by that, and this is another sheet of paper. All I've done is taken this. I've taken this form, that, in combination with that. And again, notice, there it is. It's, it's inside here, and there is the rectangle. That's, that's the beauty of, again, um, I hope I can say this with a lot of respect for each one of you, and I do have a lot of respect for each one of you. We don't take enough time to really analyze what the surfaces of the, the solids are doing. I mean, there's a mystery in there that I think is absolutely fundamentally beautiful. It reveals certain things about what they do and how they assist us in the drawing cycle. It's phenomenal. So I think that's one of the things that I was really excited about when I got that note from that young man in England about the fact, gee, I mean, I love to draw, but I, what, what do I draw? First thing I thought of was this exercise. It came instantly because I realized that that forces us into an area, not well, it's a, a terrible word to use it, but demands of us and, and repeals to us to think about what we're seeing. To be a, It's a thought process. I've said this all my career. Drawing is not a visual process. It's a verbal process. It's a thinking process. It's learning how to begin to put together shapes and forms in a vocabulary format and word power. Again, again, notice the words. Sphere, 
rectangle. It's not glass, sheet metal, hubcap. It's not that. It's the whole idea of the whole geometry of verbalization. So this is, again, let me just kind of reinforce the sketch a bit here, just, just to kind of show you what we, what we mean by that. And there it is. There's that little far side blister. That became that. Why well, draw it? I'm just going to apply it. That's how cool this stuff gets. Not the sketch, but the process. Again, highlight there. This daylight opening drops in, picks up that, picks up the tire, picks up the wheel, picks up that. A little bit of ground line here. Yeah, no, it's, I'm not filling all the blanks in. I'm laying, I'm laying the forms. Let's do this. Do I come in through here? I need a little bit of backdrop in this guy. I can come back into this. knock out some of the negative space and create some of the forms in between here that little valley there it is a little bit of highlight return door geometry I mean all of a sudden isn't that cool how it all works not the sketch but I mean the idea but there it is that's that's again <clears throat> what takes place when you again let's go back to how this started was like that how do I know that because I can show you if I go to this side bring that through drop this in drop that in drop that in pull that together with that drop that blister line in place bring up the highlight of the, the actual fender itself the actual fender itself terminate this off bring it through come around here and apply where that tail section is kind of get this lamping graphics to do this there's the lamp notice again very quick there it is draw that through bring it in Bring this in, daylight opening, come across the top, again, that little blister up on top, that gives me that, into this, into this, into fender, into base, into rear view mirror. I mean, there, there it is, that, that's, that's the same set of circumstances. Those two volumetric processes, that ovoid and that rectangle, produced an automobile. And I'll, I'll, I just want to stress again in closing here, this, the, the beauty of this whole process is it does not lock you in and your vocabulary, and I hope I can say this in the proper spirit, your vocabulary opens up enormously because you're not governed by, I gotcha. You're not governed by, oh, that's a mistake. That's the whole point. Make the mistakes. That's how we learn. That's how we open things up. That's how we expand our vocabulary. I feel sorry for, well, you know, I wouldn't do that. I know, you, wouldn't, you don't have the courage to do that. That's, that's an awful thing to say. But nonetheless, nine times, ten, oh, I wouldn't do that. When people make that comment, that tells me there's, real, there's a real signal there being stated, and that is, boy, that's kind of scary. Yeah, it should be. Being creative is scary, but it's scary in the sense that it's revealing. It just, it's exciting. And again, volumetrics to me, integrating the volumes are extremely powerful. So to that young man in England, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I would appreciate if you do get a chance to look at the stream to them sometime today that you open up and, and, and maybe give me a jingle um, and uh, uh, drop me a note about how you felt about it. If it did help, and if it didn't help, let me know how I can help a little further. And to Rachel, I hope you're still there. I hope this has been of some help to you. And boy, am I looking forward to coming back in and uh, working with you guys um, uh, in a couple of weeks or so. It's going to be a lot of fun. So and Jeff, to you, thank you very much for taking the time to join in. And again, very simple set of circumstances today. Um, the, the beauty and the elegance and extreme, and I think a better term would be the excitement or the, or the, the thrill of taking solids or geometric solids and combining them and creating a whole new vocabulary for ourselves. And I'll say this in closing uh, again too. This is all predicated on, let me get this sketch out of the way, the stuff I've done out of the way. And these things are all predicated on how what you would like to see um, these are obviously just six examples of what's out there. Um, it's infinite. I mean, I, we could go on for, for years, eons, and not cover all the bases. And to me, that's what makes it intriguing. So my message to each one of you looking at this stream today is to look at these solids and put things together that you feel comfortable with, then begin to integrate them. And above all else, I cannot stress enough, make mistakes. If I could tell you over the course of my career, how many mistakes I've made, my goodness, it'd be absolutely, it would take me an eon to describe it or eliminate or uh, illustrate it i make them all the time but it doesn't bother me and, and i don't allow i don't allow that that phenomenon or the mistake for that phenomenon to, to, to inhibit what i want to see 
There are times I'll go through a series of mistakes and say, boy, you know what? I learned what not to do, and I'm going to revise that by doing the following. And secret being said and being told, um, truth be told, even though the truth is rarely told, it reveals a lot of neat things about how we see ourselves. And I think that's the bottom line for this exercise. I want us, my desire is for us to see ourselves as being fully capable, creative individuals that can walk through a series of circumstances, simple or complex, and be extremely lucid, very confident, and above all else, authoritative in what we see. So thank you so much uh, for taking the time today, for those of you who tuned in. And again, to that young man, please drop me a note. Uh, hope you're having a, uh, a good day or evening over there in England now. Um, drop me a note when you have a chance, and we'll discuss a little further. So thank you so much for taking the time. As I said earlier on the stream today, making some changes, maybe schedule-wise, also getting a new uh, process set up on my website, the drcontrast.com. Feel free to please do that. Take a look at it. Uh, DrContrast.com has a series of drawing lessons on it. Next week, I'll be opening up a whole series of lesson plans on 20-minute little bursts into things like transportation, product architecture, interior space. <coughs> Pardon me. Just uh, a whole series of, like a, a whole library of, uh, this is what it takes to do an automobile. It's proportion, it's line, it's surface, and so forth. Uh, very quick 20-minute studies to get up on a YouTube and, uh, and add that to my website as well. So we're making a lot of changes, and uh, thanks to you, it's been a real joy to be a part of that process. And everything's going to come in under Dr. Contrast. The store, the T-shirts, all the stuff we're going to start working on. So we're expanding this thing as a result of what I've learned here on Twitch. Thank you, gang. I wish you all the very best, and to all of you a very happy and healthy new year. Uh, thanks so much. Again, uh, please visit drcontrast.com for some drawing information or some feedback. And again, I always look forward to checking my email from you all, the, view, the viewers. Uh, please uh, feel free to drop me an email at, um, at jim at drcontrast.com, all lowercase. Drop me a note, see what you think might be on your heart in terms of what you want me to look at. If I can help, we're more than happy to do so. And uh, just really been a lot of fun today. A uh, nice way to come out of the blocks with a very simple exercise, addressing a young man's concern in England about what to do when you have a drawing phobia. Not a fear, let me take that back. Uh, what to draw. Again, always reliant on a very simple, true formula. Volumetric integration. It all starts there. So very good, gang. Have a great day. All the very best. We'll look forward to seeing you maybe next week. I don't know if I'm going to go Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm, I'll put an announcement out to go one way or the other. Uh, but again, thank you so much for taking the time. And I always close this up. Always never forget to remember to dare to be great because you are. Thanks very much, gang. All the best. The Dr. Contrast. Bye-bye now.